Hello, all things Montessori community. I'm sorry it's been a few months or maybe just one month. I don't know. I don't have any kind of semblance of time. Uh, To be quite candid with all of you, I've just been dealing with some personal stuff. And, you know, sometimes things have to go on the back burner, unfortunately. But I am so excited about today's episode. I'm going to introduce the episode right now, and then I'm going to do a few little housekeeping things. So, Today on the podcast, I have such a such a cool guest. So I have Austin Matt with me on the podcast today. He is a primary guide, um, and he's the founder of The Connected Montessorian, which is an amazing resource for primary guides. It's kind of like an online community forum-based uh, resource where you can learn all different types of things about Montessori from guides who are currently in the classroom. You can share ideas, tips, and tricks. It's incredible. So that's linked below. I highly recommend looking into it if you are in the classroom, in the primary classroom. I think it's just incredible. He is also starting a brand new school, Upstone Montessori. It's going to open this fall, which is super exciting. And we get into that. I really think you guys will enjoy our conversation. So before we get into that, I want to just do a few uh, little housekeeping things. I let the Patreon community know I am going to stop the Patreon account I felt recently that while I do appreciate the support so much, and even though it's what, like three or a dollar, three dollars, one dollar a month, um, it really goes a long way. But I also feel like I haven't been putting a lot on the Patreon. I feel like I haven't been kind of upkeeping it the way that I would want to upkeep it if I was a patron of all things Montessori. So because I literally can't keep up with it right now. I've decided to just sort of temporarily stop that. And so no one will be charged anymore. It's a decision I feel really good about um, because going forward, um, my husband and I are in the midst of a move again, (laughs) and there's just some personal, really intense things going on that I think that is the best, the best step forward. And that being said, with the podcast, it's going to kind of be like whenever I have a cool interview or whenever I'm inspired, like it'll pop on probably like once a month, something like that. Um, I have an interview that I'm doing this Saturday that I'm super excited about. There's amazing things coming and, you know, Jamie's going to be back on, you know, there's always stuff to talk about. So the podcast isn't going anywhere. I just have found it impossible to maintain it on a regular basis. And I, and I really hope that um, the community can understand. I know that they will because this community is nothing short of incredible. So I just wanted to update all of you on that. And you know what? Without further ado, let's get into this awesome episode with Austin Matt. I'm so delighted today. I have a really exciting guest with me. I have Austin Matt. Um, He is the founder of The Connected Montessorian. He is also in the process of starting his brand new Montessori school, Upstone Montessori School. Um, And I'm just so delighted to have you on All Things Montessori. Welcome, Austin. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm a big fan of the pod. It's great to be here. Awesome. Love, love hearing that anyone listens. So thanks so much. (laughs) I'm sure you know this with the, with the connected Montessori and, you know, you put so much out there into the world. And then when people appreciate it, it's like, Oh, cool. Like, thanks. You know, Um, that's why I'm doing that. Great. No, it's, it's very reaffirming. Very, very wonderful. Um, So yeah, we're going to talk about a lot of things in the primary level today because Austin is a primary guide. So I love these opportunities when I get to learn a lot, you know, because I get stuck in elementary land so much. And we're going to talk about his amazing network that he's created. And then, you know, the process of starting a school, which is no small feat. Um, but before we get started, the thing that I do with anybody who comes on the podcast, I would love to know, uh, your personal Montessori story and what kind of brought you to this amazing work that we all do. Yeah. So, um, I guess the, the slightly longer version is, um, first just being very unsatisfied with, um, my own traditional schooling. Um, you know, you're, you're told what to do, how to do it, when to do it, um, you know, it just doesn't really align with 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 how we learn in, in human cognition. Um, I was completely stripped of ownership over learning. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I could always get good grades and I loved learning, but I just I just didn't like going to school. Um, so uh, I guess after college, 
um, I joined the Peace Corps. I was I was in Nicaragua for a couple years, and there I had a couple of um, sort of uh, uh, aha moments about how important early childhood is. Um, yeah. That really, from a young age, kids need to learn how to how to learn. Really, um, I was working with high schoolers, but I was seeing as I would walk by like the elementary classrooms, I would see a lot of the same issues in the elementary classrooms that I was having in high school with the high yeah. schoolers. Mm -hmm. And so I sort of just put the two together and figured that, you know, the, the kids are and teachers are sort of this is sort of what every grade looks like. And I was like, well, it, it, it can and should be better than that. So um, coming stateside uh, after Nicaragua, um, I got involved in education research and I really wanted to dig into the early childhood stuff. And I saw that. But yeah, like early childhood is pretty formative and in fact um, affects can stay with people across the lifespan. Um, I don't know if uh, you've seen a recent study, a follow-up on the Perry High Scope studies that um, are, are now underscoring how the children of people who had passed through a high quality preschool program tend to fare better because mm. of what their parents did. So. Um, that to me was mind blowing. So then um, went to grad school, um, got interested in the progressive pedagogies, um, you know, the, like the student centered um, sort of approach to education. Yeah. Um, found Montessori, dug into Montessori a little more. Um, what I loved uh, of the many things that we all love about Montessori um, is that it's it's got the philosophy, but it also has the the materials, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the, and it articulates how to implement the philosophy. It has the teacher training. It has the organizational infrastructure um, that really creates a, a pretty robust, um, I guess, ecosystem for the Montessori pedagogy. Um, and also, I, I got to see it um, in action because my nephew was in a Montessori school at the time. So oh, nice. he was having a great time with it, too. So, um that's that's how I, I found out about it. Um, after grad school, I, I started working in a Montessori school, and I've just been a Montessorian ever since. Oh wow! What did you study in undergrad? I'm curious. Business administration. Oh wow. Okay, so nothing, <laughs> nothing. Good. I mean, that's going to help you with your new right. venture of no, opening sure. a school. That's great. <laughs> right. Right. No, for sure. It's not for nothing, and it you know if. For nothing else, it got to me to where I am now. Absolutely. Um, which I'm which I'm glad about. So absolutely. And I mean, it seems to me that your experience in the Peace Corps kind of, you know, changed your life in a way, maybe like kind of changed the direction. I, I don't know. I'm putting words in your mouth, perhaps, but it's it seems like that kind of, you know, directed the path towards um humanity and you know, understanding child development. That's pretty fascinating. Yeah, for sure. No, you're not putting words in my mouth. I would, I would, I would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that makes sense with your primary background that you are interested in child development because there's so much amazing research specifically in the primary age group. And I think from zero to six, you know, when you get to elementary, there's still research, there's still a lot, but I, I was always jealous of my primary colleagues and my primary friends because you guys got it made in there, you know, like everything mm -hmm. is just like done and you have like all the, it's so beautifully laid out. Um, in elementary, we have to do a little bit more improvisation, right? We have to kind of, you know, we we're kind of like scrappy in elementary a little bit. Yeah. Um, so what other things drew you to primary? Like what made you want to pursue that specific training? Yeah, I would, I would say, I would chalk this up to say two major influences. The first being as, um, you sort of alluded to like just how important that that first developmental plane is um you know maria montessori noticed this like kids during that time they're they're just different you know mm -hmm. they're they're taking things in differently um and so in addition to how important it is um right now in like in society like young kids are viewed as just like you just sort of got to make sure they survive until they get to school and then they start learning there. Yeah. You know, so they're so capable uh, and there's so much potential there um, combined with the fact that it's just overlooked an overlooked period of, of life. Um, 
really those two things are, are, are what's driving me to, to the primary age. It's so true. And I think that children, one of my favorite things in Montessori is the respect aspect. I always, I found that pretty groundbreaking when I was doing my training and learning more about it, like how you speak to children, how you take everything so seriously. Every interaction is of utmost importance. Like if it's how to sit in a chair, if it's walking, if it's a math material, it doesn't matter what it is. It's, it's all about respect because you know, you're showing your respect towards that child and showing them like, I take you seriously. Like, like, yes, you might be four and a half years old, but I take your learning seriously. And, and yeah, I don't think children really get that. And in our society, it's always like, you're being too loud. You're being, you know, too disruptive. You can't go to this. You can't sit at the adult table. You have to go over here. You know, it's, it's always sort of like being pushed on them to not really be their true selves or their full potential. Um, and yeah, I, I, I can totally see that. I almost did primary training, um, for that exact reason. Cause I worked with young children for a very long time. Uh, before I did my training, I was working with, you know, very, I mean, I was working with like babies and, and that stuff, but I did work with the three to six age and I was pretty drawn to it. Um, but ultimately I ended up in elementary cause it's, it suits my personality more, <laughs> frankly. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah i mean i like to that point too like again they're they're so capable but mm-hmm. what the what conventional wisdom does not tell us is like how to to use the montessori term to prepare the environment for them to be able to operate independently right um that's not it it is not always common sense um there you know it, it doesn't kids don't come with manuals. Right. Um, right. And so, um, yeah, just like, just at that age, it's, it's like, they're, they're independent, they're articulate, Mm -hmm. they're mobile. Um, Mm -hmm. but I think just people just don't know how to handle them. And I think it's also interpreted in a bad way, like a child Mm -hmm. that's articulate, like that could be somebody saying my child won't stop talking, you know, but it's sort of like, it can be seen in a negative space, but because I, I think the the Montessori way of life and way of living and being with children, it's it's sometimes it's not the easiest solution. A lot of times it's not the easiest solution. It's easier in the long run. It's like you have mm-hmm. to put the work up front and then you see the benefits in, in a few months or something and then for the rest of your life. But yeah, it just takes a little bit yeah. more work. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And we see that in the classroom every year. Like you got to get the ground yeah. rules in place at the beginning of the year. Oh, and then yep. it's, it's much more uh, smooth sailing after that. Absolutely. So um, I have to bring this up. You know, I, I am a woman, you know, obviously I identify as a woman and, you know, we're in a Montessori and teaching in general is a female kind of driven industry. It's been like that forever. And so being a male, especially primary guide, um, how has that experience been? Have you had any pushback at all or has it just been smooth sailing? Yeah. Smooth sailing. I, and you know, I, I I knew what I was getting into. Um, I think yep. education more broadly, but definitely the younger the students, um, yep. the more likely it is that their teachers are going to be female. Yep. Um, but, you know, I think that tells me that um, that it sort of reiterates the fact that, yeah, this is really important. And like, you do need to pay attention to this and what's happening during this period because everybody else is ignoring it. Yep. Um, but no, I mean, it, you know, my, my colleagues are my colleagues. Um, I don't really find it isolating or, you know, what That's have nice. you. I just, I'm just working yeah. with the people that I'm working with. Um, so as, as I've uh, alluded to, I, I think what's more isolating working with young kids is that when I tell somebody that I work with young kids, they're like, oh, that's so cute. And oh they my just God. think I babysit. And then that's, that's the end of it, you know? Totally. Uh, so like that discrepancy with like how rigorous I approach my work and yep. how serious I take, I, I really don't take too much very seriously, but I take my work very seriously. Yep. Um, and like preparing the environment, meeting needs, getting mm-hmm. kids interested in learning. Um, like I, 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 I'm very serious about that. And so when mm-hmm. I tell people that, oh yeah, I work with three to six year olds, they say, oh, that's adorable. And then. Oh, I'm rolling it. my yeah. eyes because it's, yeah. <laughs> I totally get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. It's. It is, in my opinion, I'm obviously biased because I'm in this work, but I think it is one of the most important work 
works jobs in the entire world. Uh, the human brain, especially under the age of six, is incredibly malleable. And if there's anything traumatic, anything bad, anything not um, not serving them during that time, that's going to stay with you maybe forever, a lot of times forever. Um, and so the work that you're doing with those three to six year olds, you know, making them feel safe, giving them the environment that they deserve, meeting those needs. I mean, I can't think of anything else more important, honestly. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, and you know, we can, um, sort of segue into this if you would like, but that's one of the motivating factors for me in, in starting a school too. Like, you know, yeah. definitely have this vision of, of what I think an early childhood educational institution should be, but like, this is a societal issue. If you look at the kids that have access to high quality education, like they are a very small portion of the population. Yep. Um, combined with the fact that these years are so important and they offer a potential um, like generational inflection point to improve future outcomes of that family. Mm -hmm. It's, I, 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 I get a little mad to be honest. Well, I think it's, yes, the system has a lot of uh, cracks and there's a lot of things that are messed up about it. Um, absolutely. And I, I go back and forth with this as well as being um, in the Montessori job, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the right word is being in the Montessori sphere. Um, I, I had a really hard time understanding that I was going to work for a private school that like really, really irked me because I'm a, I was a public school kid, my whole upbringing, you know, I mean, that's, we had great public schools and I had a great education. I didn't know what Montessori was. My parents didn't either. And so I had this sort of thing that I just was really passionate about public schools. And then I found out Montessori, found it out, loved it. It was like, oh, I love this. And then I, I learned about how, you know, Montessori isn't, isn't really able to be done on the, pub. it's, it's hard to do it successfully in the public space is what I mean. And I had a really hard time with that because I thought, wow, this is the best thing for children. And what do you mean? I can't, we can't offer it to everybody. What are your, what are you saying? You, and, and that, it's something I still actually really struggle with, uh, to be quite honest, because, um, you're right. It's a small pool that, you know, that people can get into. And a lot of times it's privilege and it's people that have the means to pay for it. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having money or anything like that. I'm just saying sometimes it feels incredibly unfair. So I get yeah. pretty mad too, um, because I want it to be accessible for everybody. And, and as Montessorians, once it's sort of like, it's like the curtain is just pulled over, like pulled out from under your eyes. Like once you're in it, you're like, well, I can't, can't do anything else. Like this yeah. is what it has to be for kids, you know? Yeah, for sure. And, and again, like, so like, yes, there's, it's, it's, it's not just that only few people can access this. Um, there are like, you can, you can make that argument, um, but also a better educated population, like, everybody benefits from that. Totally. Um, and again, the evidence makes pretty clear that that starts, <laughs> well, it, it starts, you, you start learning in utero, but um, yep. having access to early childhood education, um, high quality early childhood education um, has benefits very far down the road. Absolutely. And I think also, um, you know, the lessons that are taught in Montessori, the ones that are like, I'm talking practical life and grace and courtesy. Those are, they're truly lessons for your entire life. And those I think are almost more important than, than anything else, especially at that primary level. And even I would say in toddler, um, you know, just the simple fact of knowing how to sit down for lunch at a table with like real plates and real fork and a knife and know how to, you know, compose yourself and have a conversation with somebody. I mean, those social skills, they just set you up for success in life in more ways than one. And there's a real beauty and care in Montessori about, um, you know, really carrying yourself a certain way and being polite. Um, but also that, that fierce independence that Montessori kids have. Um, yeah. I mean, man, our world would look a lot different if, uh, if everybody went to Montessori school. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, the content's all there. Yeah. The content's all there, uh, throughout the curriculum, but totally. um, also the, I, I love the emphasis on the higher order cognition of like the, the executive function. That's just, it's just baked into 
um, the Montessori method. Um, and for the three-year-olds, for the young kids, like these are these capacities are starting to come online, and that's when they're most amenable. So, um, yeah. I think that's that's one of the one of the many great things about about the Montessori approach. So you decided to do this school, start this school mm-hmm. for amazing reasons. I'm totally with you. How is it going? Is it like when are you guys going to open? I know you've already told me, but you know, yeah. let's tell everybody like what where you oh, are in the process. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 going. It's going. Yep. Um. So we uh. Yeah, so we're enrolling now. We're opening this coming fall. Um, okay. Really, it's it's a, a lot of paperwork, a lot of the, like, mm-hmm. you know, going through the city to make sure that I have all the paperwork done that I need, that I have, like, the, the zoning variance and the occupational change permit for the building and <laughs> those sorts of things. Right. Um, but, you know, it's it's good. It's, it's going well. Um, it's been great to connect with families in the area, um, yeah. and get people excited about Montessori and, you know, share my excitement for Montessori with other people. Um, mm-hmm. so um, it, it, it'll be in, um, Nashua, New Hampshire. Um, and there is no Montessori school here at the moment. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah. That's great so, for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so, so, um, yeah, it's been great to, uh, yeah, to just, to just share what we're doing with people. I've got the classroom set up. Um, you know, it's been, it's been fun to wow families with, you know, the amount of, um, uh, I guess, importance that we place on establishing the classroom environment. Um, it's been, it's been great to talk with them about the philosophy and everything. It's been, it's been good. That's so yeah, awesome. so we're still enrolling. Yeah. We're, we're hoping to, we, we're not even, um, planning to get a full classroom, um, for this first year. Okay. Um, that way we can create a really strong classroom culture and then expand from there. That's smart. Yeah. What's your, um, what's your enrollment cap for the first year then? Um, so the absolute max would be a classroom. So, um, tops, we would probably say 17 or 18, gotcha. um, but it would be nice um, to have even, even less than that. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So are you going to be in the classroom and running the school? Is that your... In the classroom, I'll be running the school. I'll probably be cleaning up at night. I'm <laughs> keeping the books. I'm You're making doing materials. It all. You're I'm doing, doing it all. everything. Yeah, I do have. I uh, I have another teacher. I had uh, another teacher to work with me in the morning. Nice. Um, who is? Yeah, she's she's um, she's a fellow Montessorian. She's uh, such a sweetheart. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, we've we've. I'm I'm very excited about it. Man, I'm so excited too. Yeah. That's so exciting. I yeah. mean, there's something so amazing about going off on your own, especially um, because you can have like freedom in your own classroom, but to have, have freedom in your own school and to really like right. tap into what you'd want. That's so exciting. Oh man. Yeah. Well, fall's coming up. It's going to yeah, be I here know. before you know it. It's going to be here <laughs> any moment, any minute, um, any minute now. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, that's they're actually, awesome. can, can I mention? So uh, with our school too, uh, there are a couple other things that we want to do differently. So like, yeah. yes, we're a Montessori school and I feel like everybody that is uh, listening to this probably appreciates uh, Montessori already. So I'm not going to dive too deep Would into hope that. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so as I mentioned before too, I was working in education research for a, a couple of years. And one of my big takeaways was that like education research and practice are heavily, heavily siloed. Oh um, yeah. Okay. As the saying goes in research, publish or perish. So they're just Got they're it. trying to write papers and they're moving on. Mm. Um, and mm. that doesn't always benefit practitioners. Right. And so I think that, and we haven't figured this out quite yet, but we'd like to somehow wed research and practice on the ground so that the research products that are being made are useful to, to both parties to both researchers and practitioners, like researchers get to write their papers. Um, and then there are important practicable takeaways that um, guides that teachers can use right away. Um, so that's one, something slightly different that schools don't really do that we'd like to address. And then uh, beyond that as well, this this bridge between school and home, oh, I yeah. think mm-hmm. schools can do a much better job of that. Um, you had, uh, Simone Davies on the pod a little while ago. Yeah. And that 
a group that she does, like something like that. I feel like should totally. be built right into what the school's doing. Um, I agree. To share that that expertise uh, mm-hmm. from the school with home, um, but also like parents know their kids the best, so schools will benefit from that as well. Um, I couldn't that, agree more. Yeah. Yeah, I think that could be really powerful in in driving outcomes um, for kids too. Uh, as things stand now, even in a in a good school, like they they have one sort of context in the morning, another one in the afternoon. Maybe if they stay for extended day, those typically are not um, Montessori trained teachers, and then they have another context right. at home. Right. Uh, if we can align all of those things, like mm-hmm. all of those contexts for the child, I think that would really, it would really um, drive outcomes and in, 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 it would make a much stronger impact in um, everything that we're trying to do in the morning. Yeah, because we only, I mean, yes, we have them for a big chunk of the day, but when you think about it, there's so many, so many moments that we're not around for, obviously, you know, right. because we're not going home with them. So there is a lot lost, I think. And, you know, I think that parents, uh, just from my experience with the parents I've talked to, I think parents are super intimidated. They're scared. They are trying their best. And, you know, they're already sending their kid to a Montessori school. So it's always like, it's already like, you're doing great, you know, like way to go, but yeah. it's not, it's not that simple. There's a lot of things and that you have to put into consideration. And, you know, one thing that, um, at the first school I worked for that we really, really talked to about parents when they were um, onboarding, we were like, this is serious. Like, are you, you know, you are, this is the kind of school that you're, you're getting yourself into. And we want you to know what you're signing up for. And it was a really intense conversation. And, and some parents, you know, quite frankly, they were like, I can't do it. And that's fine. That's okay. That is totally okay. Um, But I think it's great. You know, parents can become your strongest allies. They really can. Because I think I've seen parents who've come in with no knowledge of Montessori and then their, their minds are just blown. I mean, similarly to, you know, you and to me, I mean, me personally, when I learned about Montessori, I just, I felt like I was like, oh my God, like I was just completely mind blown by it. And then it's all that I wanted to do, all that I really thought was important, you know? And so I think it's awareness, it's education, it's, it's time and patience, but I, I really think that's really exciting. And I think if you, and I can tell you have the determination just from talking to you right now, I think you'll do it. And I can't wait to watch from afar. (laughs) Oh yeah. We're going to do it. Yeah, no, it's definitely. And and I, I empathize with families. Like it's a lot like, like young children is it's hard to deal with young kids. Yeah. They're, they're just, and I, by no means, I I hope I'm not conveying that. Like, I I feel like, like we're just going to show up to their house and like tell them exactly how to do things. And like, (laughs) No, <laughs> no, like that's, that's not it. This is like a, a knowledge sharing information sharing yeah. type thing. There's so much that we do in the classroom as second nature that I feel like if, if some of those sort of tips and tricks and strategies and approaches were shared, I yeah. feel like parents would, would greatly benefit. And also um, in my experience too, I've, I've had a lot of families that are like, yes, like to give me some, like, tell me what to do. Like, totally, I need some help, you know, totally. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, as long as everybody's open-minded, I think that could be a really uh, beneficial relationship to, to double down on. I love that. And like, I also want to jump in and say too, like, you know, even as a Montessori guide, like, you know, every day is not perfect. Like, you know, none of this is to say you have to do it this specific way, every single moment of every single day, like kids are difficult and some days it's just not going to happen. And that's, that's totally okay. But I think you're right. Just, you know, it's more, it's gathering more information because it does become second nature. It really, really does. Uh, Cause you see the benefits of it. I just, I love that you have parents that are, that have that willingness. Yeah. That's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And it could be little things too. Like, Oh geez, I was just having this conversation. Uh, I forget the exact example, what it was. It might've been like work rugs. They were oh, just God. so blown away by the fact that their kid can keep all their work on their work rug. On a rug. Like, yeah. yeah. And like in the classroom, like we, we don't. Yeah. Like, it's not no problem. Work rug has, has never been an option. You know, it's just there. Right. Like, it's what you do. Rugs. Right. It's what you do. When we're done, we put it away. And they're like, yep. wow, my child does that. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and there's no like, reason yeah, they can't do it at home. Sorry. I didn't mean right. to cut you off, but there's no, no, no reason. They, they're totally capable, completely right. capable. Right. Yeah. I think there's a lot of, I hate that. I don't really use the word innovation, but I think there's a lot um, of work that schools can do 
uh, a little bit differently that I think would would really benefit the kids greatly. I love the research component. That's fascinating. And that's what Maria Montessori did. So I think that is crucial to any Montessori school because, you know, that is how we, that's how we're going to get better. It's how we're going to get, it's how the pedagogy will get stronger. It's how it's going to keep evolving and keep being fresh. Cause this is a, I mean, Maria Montessori lived a long time ago. So I think ongoing research is, I think it's of the utmost importance. Um, so I love that. Yeah, that the, the body of evidence around um, the Montessori approach is it is growing. Yeah. And I, yeah, it can just, it, I, I just think it can be so much, um, it can, ju- it can be better, you know, it can be better. And I think of course it can. Like trying to figure out the, the interplay between research and practice. Um, yeah. If, if we can get that close to being right, then uh, I think great things are, are going to happen. I think so too. Cool. I want to talk a little bit about the connected Montessorian because yes. this is what you, when you first reach out to me, this is what we first talked about. And I love it because as I was sharing with you previously, um, I think teachers need community and that's exactly what you've provided. So can you tell the audience a little bit about it? Yeah. So the connected Montessorian provides organized index online community for guides to get together and just share, be it like um, a cool resource that you found or that you made, or maybe a problem that you're having or a solution that you devised that you think other people would benefit from too. Like this is it. Um, It's essentially where guides can get together. So for me, uh, during my training, you know, you're there with a group of other people learning the Montessori approach. Yep. We had school visits that we had to do, which I loved, especially after being in the classroom and then doing those visits. It's great to see other people's materials, yeah. see how they set up their room, to talk to them about solutions to problems that they have come up with. But then after training, you know, and especially if you're in a small school, you're largely cut off other than oh. like the one or two Montessori events that you go to a year. And that's totally, it. totally. Um, so with the connected Montessori, and I'm hoping to like continue that, that conversation and all that sharing that cross pollination of ideas throughout the year. Love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it is so important. Yeah. Because like, I mean, training year, oh, it gives me all the feels like thinking about know, all right? my buds. Like it was so fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was so hard, but it was so fun. And then it's just taken away from you. Um, and yeah, I mean, we have technology and like whatever, but it is, it's really difficult. I was fortunate enough when I first started teaching, I lived in, uh, right outside of Washington, DC and I lived close to my training center and they did a lot of events. And I went to like every single one. Cause I was That's just great. like, I have to be there cause I missed yeah. it. <laughs> so that was great. And now I don't live close to it anymore. Um, and actually it's moved anyway. So it's not even there anymore. Uh, yeah. so yeah, I completely, it's necessary. It's vital. Um, and I, I love that primary guides have that, have that. And, um, I, it seems like they use it and they like it and it's working. So that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there are, there are other places where like I've seen like email threads and like other large social media sites where people can get together. But I think, um, that without it being so structured and organized and yeah, you know, being being full of distraction you know it's uh it makes it a little harder so i think there's some some value add there to have this place like yes this is just for us to get together to talk about yeah. all things montessori i i love that um and i'll link it in the show notes too so people yeah, can can find can find it if they i know a few primary guides who would love that i mean i'm sure i think everybody should sign up for it but that's great. So before we wrap up, I have a I have a question for you, and it's just been on my mind recently Shoot. because I guess I've been battling it myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's about guide or teacher fatigue and how to stay mm-hmm. inspired. <sighs> because recently, I just it's like I got hit with a wall, and it's because okay. spring break was late, and you know it, we just needed yeah. a break, and then we had spring break, and it, it's better now. But I oftentimes feel like it is just our work is so exhausting. And I was just curious how you, you know, get through that uh, when it really hits. <laughs> yeah. Um, great question. 
uh, I don't know that there is one easy answer for everybody, <laughs> I know. obviously. Right. Um, I mean, with everything that I'm setting out to do, like, I feel like this is my life's work. So I just got to remind myself of these like higher level issues. And then I think, yeah, you know, this is, I'm, I'm in the right spot. This is what I need to be doing. So that, that certainly helps. And then in the classroom too, I, uh, I, I try to trust the process as much as possible. You know, so if kids aren't feeling it that day, now that the weather's starting to warm up, we can get outside, we can do some different things. Yeah. Um, especially in the afternoon with the older kids, you know, you have a little more leeway with what you can do without the full group. Right. But yeah, just continue to like, see what, what they're up to and, and what they want to do. And then try to think a little creatively about how to incorporate that into um, something that you can have in the classroom. Yeah. I mean, that's truly kind of like following the child, you know, like what you just said, which is, I have to remind myself of that sometimes because I think it's easy to blame yourself or say, what am I doing wrong? Or, you know, why are they crazy today? Or, you know, what did yeah. I, you know, um, it just, the energy lately has just been like super high. Uh, cause it's, it's basically summer down here in Charlotte and you know, everybody's just like really, really energetic. And so, yeah, it's hard to, it's hard not to just feel like a drill sergeant sometimes, but then you're right. I love how you said that, you know, observing them and being like, they're not into it today. And that's fine. Like we're just going to go outside and it's fine because it's just one day and it's not the end of the world. And, and putting it kind of in that perspective of a life's work and that, um, it is so important. Um, it kind of, I, I tend to get stuck in the nitty gritty minute by minute details sometimes. Uh, and I, that's a great reminder to just kind of step back and look at the big picture. Yeah. So oh yeah, for sure. And that, and, and if you continue to, to, if, if they're not feeling it and, and you just continue to push and push and push, oh. uh, you know, you might be end up being resentful towards each other, you know, and like, <laughs> yes. that's, that's not good for the classroom either. Um, but again, one of the many great things about Montessori is like <laughs> you, you can just like, you know, take a, take a left turn, you know, yeah. if you want to do something else that day, you can. Right. Um, it's adaptable. Exactly. Exactly. To, uh, yeah, to any context, um, you know, year by year, moment by moment. So if the kids want to like, go like compare whatever different types of trees, let's go outside and let's look at different types of trees, you know? I love that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this has been Great. I'm so excited about your new venture and Upstone Montessori School. It's going to be amazing. And I will definitely link the Connected Montessorian below so people can join um, and they should. And then, yeah, I mean, just thank you so much for being here and talking about Montessori. It's just such a fun conversation. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. This has been great. I appreciate it, Rachel. 